You only need to drop your phone off a boat or into a puddle or, yes, into a toilet once to wish for a world where all smartphones are waterproof. Well, the good news? These days, a lot of them are, at least water resistant. The bad news? They're probably not as resistant as you think. I'm Mr. Mobile, and today we're going to learn how to decode IP ratings to find out how much water your gadgets can really handle. And we're going to talk to the Grand Marshal of all gear destroyers himself, Mr. Jerry Rig Everything, to learn how water wrecks your gadgets and what you can do about it if it does. Long story short, oh, uh, I'm sorry, that's your line, Zach. Long story short, it's best to keep your electronics as dry as possible. But yeah, thanks for having me on, Mr. Mobile. Let's do this. Yes, let's. Okay, so if your electronic gadget claims that it's water resistant, odds are it carries an IP rating. And that is one of the most misunderstood things in mobile. The IP stands for International Protection, and it's a huge body of standards covering everything from power outlets in your home to street lights. But basically, it's all about keeping harmful stuff from the outside out of the insides of your product. In 2018, most phones that are advertised as water resistant carry an ingress protection rating of IP67 or IP68. You notice how I said each number individually instead of 67, 68? Well, that's because each digit means something different. The first number has nothing to do with water at all. This is all about keeping solids out. In this case, a six means the phone is so well sealed that not even dust can get in. That's important to protect the components and also to keep things like camera lenses free of dust. If you see a number lower than six here, it's not dust tight. So you'll want to take care not to store it in areas with a lot of sawdust or fine particulates, like I imagine Zach's workshop is. Fun fact, even with that protection, earpiece speakers are magnets attracting metal that rips water-resistant speakers to shreds, so accidents can still happen. I can't decide if that fact is fun or scary. Anyway, if you see an X in either part of the rating, that doesn't necessarily mean it's unprotected, but it does probably mean it wasn't tested for that category. The second number of the IP rating is where the waterproofing comes in. The scale goes from dripping water to spraying water to fiercely spraying water to a total dunk, and then various depths of a dunk. And what that boils down to is, if we look at a phone with a seven rating at the end, well, that should be able to survive while submerged under one meter of water for up to 30 minutes. That doesn't mean it'll start leaking at 31 minutes, it just means that's how long the test goes for. Now, a phone with an 8 at the end of its IP rating should be able to survive in up to 3 meters of water, but the exact time and depth of the test can vary according to the manufacturer. The deeper you go, the more pressure there is on the device, and the bigger chance that water will get inside and do damage. That's right. Now, as with all numbers, the IP code can be confusing. First off, the water rating is not cumulative. What that means is that a device with an 8 at the end of the IP rating is not necessarily also certified for the same stuff that a 5 or a 6 is. See, those ratings use powerful jets to blast water at the phone from every direction, which is a very different kind of stress than just dunking the unit underwater. If a phone is rated for both spray and immersion, you'll see both of those called out on the spec sheet separately, like Sony does with its XZ2 smartphone. But no matter how well you know the code, there are still lots of reasons you should keep your phone away from water. For that, Zach, take it away and teach us something. Thanks, man. First thing to keep in mind is that all of these IP tests assume that it's fresh water. Salt from the ocean or chlorine from the pool can cause near instant corrosion. You'll notice that after scuba divers get out of the salty ocean, they'll rinse off their gear with fresh water, so that salty corrosion doesn't have a chance to set in. Also, let's say your phone is about a year old and it's been dropped a few times. Experience temperature fluctuations, all of which can compromise the adhesive and the IP rating over time. Also, even if the phone does have an IP rating, almost no manufacturer will warranty water damage. You might ask, how do these companies know that the phone has been wet before? Well, there's these little white stickers attached to the motherboard that turn pink when wet. I've shown them a few times on my channel and they're inside every smartphone. Finally, you've probably seen the YouTube videos that dunk a not waterproof phone in the sink for a few hours and then pull it out and it's still working. 
Even though it's working, it suddenly does not get honorary waterproof status. Corrosion is probably already happening inside of that phone, it just might not show up instantly. Water damage is an inevitable cancer. Over time, it will kill the phone. So like I said before, it's better just to keep your phone dry as much as possible and only rely on that IP rating for accidents. Thanks a lot, man, and I can testify to that last point. See, I used an LG V30 to film an afternoon of snorkeling in the Pacific, followed by tomfoolery in the pool, and though I carefully rinsed it with fresh water, its display flickered out mere minutes after I got out of the pool. When my producer Justice pried open that sucker using tools we borrowed from uh, you, Zach, we found the culprit, a tiny, and I do mean tiny, salt deposit on a pinky nail-sized component right here, where water probably snuck in through the speaker membrane. I'm not um, salty about this. I shouldn't have been swimming in the ocean with this phone, and I know that. But in this era where a lot of phones are advertised as water resistant or even waterproof, well, I wanted to share the cautionary tale with you so you'll know not to make the same mistake that I did. Folks, if you dig videos like these, be sure to subscribe to both Jerry Rig Everything and The Mr. Mobile here on YouTube, and please share it if you know someone who should know more about how waterproof their phone is or isn't. Also, let me know in the comments if you like these kind of collabs, and maybe next time, Zach and I will tackle another misunderstood aspect of phone ratings, military spec durability. I'm totally in. Thanks for having me on, Mr. Mobile. Thank you, man. And thanks to you, our viewers. Until next time, stay mobile, my friends.